Hello and welcome to a brand new installment of Nintendo News Report for Friday, May 4th, 2018. I'm your host, Alexander Kalafi, joining you with a full panel of Nintendo News Reporter. If you're waiting until Friday because I was hoping to uh I was hoping to include the new Nintendo Switch online details, but I'm guessing that'll be a that'll be a next week thing. Joined by Donald Terrio. Hi. Hi. This is the only top nep I want to acknowledge. I can't see it. I, which which nep is that? That would be Nafini, the uh the wielder of the slaying lance. Oh. <clears throat> Is that an actual NEP, or is that in Fire Emblem? That is Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, word. Joined by Justin Baruby. Tell me about Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai never dies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Zach, really liked it. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not even going to pretend to know what Cobra Kai is. That's probably going to make someone mad in the chat, but... <laughs> I'm I'm gonna my I'm option mad. I'm was mad about it. <laughs> my option was to Google it and then pretend Cobra Kai. All right, that is an American comedy drama web television series based on the Karate <laughs> Kid film series. Oh, so this aired only a couple days ago. Yeah, it just released. So yeah, it's good. I liked it, but I'm a huge Karate Kid trilogy fan. Yeah, trilogy. I love three. I don't care what anyone says, and people are going to be mad for me for saying that. But I have a sick obsession with Karate Kid Three. <laughs> gotcha. Now, is this starring the kid as an adult? Yes, and his that... rival. <laughs> they got Ralph Macchio. Yeah, the original <laughs> Karate Kid. That's this has a... nothing to do with Nintendo, unless we pull out the NES game. But it works. Wait, now I'm looking at his page. There was a Psych the movie. <laughs> And okay, actually, no, he, he has a relatively active role. He was on Whose Line Is It Anyway at one point. He was on the Comedy Central roast of Rob Lowe. That sounds like a hoot. Um, all right. Hi, Zach Miller. <laughs> uh, nep Nep for life. Nep Nep. Switch is the new Vita. Switch is the new. <laughs> Switch means life. <laughs> Yeah, we have we don't have that much news today, so we're going to be talking to the chat. If the chat says anything to us, if the chat doesn't say anything to us, we won't be talking to the chat. But I do have it open just in case. To start, the new Donkey Kong game came out. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on Switch seems like it's good. Neil gave it a nine point five. You can read that review on NintendoWorldReport.com. The problem is the Switch version. Excuse me, the Wii U version of the game got pulled from the North American Wii U eShop. Right? Yep. Uh, it went down, It was first noticed to be missing Monday afternoon, and Nintendo has not officially commented as to why the game was removed from the, from the Wii U eShop, but you could probably... There's probably 40 different reasons why they would do that. Uh... It is still up for sale in Europe. I haven't checked Japan, but it seems like it would probably still be there as well. Uh, the and it's because it was a Nintendo Selects title. It was twenty dollars on the on the eShop when it was still available. And if you can find a copy at retail, it's still available for twenty bucks MSRP. But it. Even if there's some sort of technical reason or like if they discovered a giant security hole in the game, I'm kind of shocked they would pull it down at this point because, I mean, the, they haven't really cared about the Wii U and since the Switch came out. And it's not like of the other games that have been ported over from Wii U to Switch that they've pulled those. Like, you can still buy Bayonetta 2 and 1. And those mm -hmm. came out, what, two and a half months ago. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell people this now. Do not post uh, spoilers for things <coughs> in chats. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna. If anyone's watching the video, actually, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. It just, I understand the reasoning of Donkey Kong costing twenty bucks on the Wii U and then costing sixty bucks on the Switch, but the Wii U is such a 
dead platform. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I mean that in a, they've, they've quite literally moved on to this one. Yeah. It just doesn't, it seems like it's a great way to make the fan base a little sour. Yeah. But it doesn't, I can't see them making a lot more money because they did this. Like that doesn't that doesn't line up with me just because the Wii U is so old hat. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be very interested to see how well this sells and to who. I hope well. it does well because I think it was. I only played the Wii U version, but I thought it was a fantastic game, and it deserved more people to give it a chance. It proportionally it sold about as well as Returns did, so it should have a good base of sales. It's just that the difference between the system that Returns was on and the system with Tropical Freeze was on for the first time, bit of a user base difference. So that's sure. why it sold about a six of the six of the copies that it ended up selling on yeah. on Wii. But I I do want to get this at some point. It's just I have some travel this month, so my money's kind of tied up right now, and I really not sure how many people actually bother to buy Tropical Freeze digitally on Wii U anyway. I think I'm one of the few people that actually did because oh. on Wii U that game was 13 gigs. Yep, I Holy I shit. can I can confirm that because I also have a digital copy of that game on my Wii U. Did they not like no, it was, was it returns that they gave away in in sort of the dying embers yes. of Club Nintendo? Yep, for 3DS. Okay. That's how I played well, they it. They gave Pikmin 3 away or something at one point. I got Game & Wario. They gave that. Pikmin 3 away if you got uh, Wind Waker early, I believe. No, uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart, yeah. If you really want to play Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on Wii U for a low price, Amazon US right now says you can get a used acceptable version of it for $12.27. Plus four fifty four shipping, so sixteen seventeen bucks for a used copy, which is a okay. Yeah, although I think I think it was Games GameStop. They were they apparently have been sold out of new and used copies of of Returns for a bit, or of Tropical Freeze on Wii U for about a year now. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's a strange thing if Nintendo did it for money reasons. But it's a first-party title, and I can't think there's any licensed music that doesn't belong to them in that game. Yeah. It's just it's, it's a very strange decision. I think the, it was just something that was done to satisfy retailers here. Because they're like, yeah. oh, we were selling it for so low. Why do we want to carry the same <laughs> game on this system for, what would we say, $40 more? Yeah. Yeah. Three times the price, basically. Yeah. The the only other possible way I can I could the only other possible thought process I can think of as to why they would yank the Wii U version is that you, if you go on Nintendo.com and you look up Tropical Freeze, you would get both game pages, and Nintendo didn't want to deal with the headaches of, ooh, I bought this $20 copy. Oh, and then, and then I can't play it. Yeah. Yeah. That, but even at that point, you could yank it off the web storefront but still make it available on the system itself, and you can't even buy it on there. Yeah, the retailer thing makes the most sense to me, Justin. If the if the money is the consideration here, but they release new versions of games all the time. I don't know. It just it's just strange. I this is one of those few things that I really can't wrap my head around. It could just be a combination of these factors, just all like eh, maybe one person complain plus all this other stuff and they're like eh, just rip it off who's who's actually going to care let's be honest we're talking about this but who really cares that tropical freeze isn't available digitally on wii u at this point i'm more upset that it's 60 dollars at launch yeah, on switch and it launched at 50 dollars on wii u several years ago mm. well i mean you gotta you gotta pay up for that funky mode i guess so yeah, it's just it's a very it's a great game. I liked it almost as much as I liked the first one. It's a very good Donkey Kong platformer. I think just it's worth in, the price. I think I think it's worth full price at the time it came out, 
now is a game that has been around for several years. I think it's greedy of Nintendo to ask that much. Same. And I don't <clears throat> I don't say that as like a Nintendo hater or anything. I think it's kind of a greedy thing to ask for more than you priced the original game at on Switch. I think $40 would have been a fine price for this. Or maybe yep. they could have did 40 on eShop. Or even 50s like and uh, 50 is unacceptable. You know, also got to remember it's on a, a cartridge now and not a CD, which also jacks up the production. Oh, cost. that's true. But that's the uh, that's it could have been 40 and 50 versus 60 and 60. So. Yeah, I don't think retail would have been too thrilled with that. There's a reason why, like Nick, like some Nicholas games launch at 40 bucks. Is that and those are the ones that come out in stores. Well, Cave I hope store I'm... is still 30. <laughs> huh? I don't know how they got away with it, but Cave Story is 30 bucks. Because <laughs> they've been well, getting away with that for the last yeah, decade. That's true. That's true. And I bought it again. So I, I hope everyone enjoys Retro's new game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that they actually the they actually asked about that on the Nintendo Power podcast that came out yesterday. And the only developer that they're acknowledging for that is Retro. Really? Oh wow. So I mean, this is what retro has been working on. They're definitely working on something other than this. I, I think I think so. their staff is like 200 people or something. Wow. Maybe maybe they're working on the online service. We'll find out now. I will find out. <laughs> retro Studios. <laughs> you just see the logo pop up in their E3 video. People are freaking out in YouTube trailers. And then it's just introducing the Nintendo online <laughs> service. It wouldn't be the first time. What was Rare doing for the better part of a decade? Making Avatar clothing, I think. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, we sport, uh, not we, uh, Connect the, Sports. The Connect Sports. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Retro. Bring, bring back nuts and bolts, you cowards. <laughs> Retro Studios LinkedIn. Let me see oh, what it says. I I use LinkedIn. A lot now. 132 employees on LinkedIn. Um, which I'm guessing means active, although I'm not totally sure. I'm guessing they probably have 100 to 200 people, but at the very least, they have enough that they, they're they working on something other than this. Actually, no, because they, they put out those job postings all the time, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, the Nintendo Jobs account is quite active with positions at Retro. Right, right. Yeah, they're working on something. Maybe we'll see it this year. Working on a standalone Blast Ball HD. There you go. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, because they're they're doing the someone's doing the it's Zen Studios is publishing the Super Dodgeball game. Oh yeah, I saw that. That was, that's apparently a very well received video game. Anyways, anyways. Anyways, FIFA 18 adding World Cup and May 29th update. Donald, is this a news story? Um, it's probably bigger in Europe because, well, the U.S. didn't qualify for the World Cup. Ha ha, suckers. Well, <laughs> it's, well but, it's soccer, so who cares? Yeah, but <laughs> the, um, well, Fox cares because they, um, they really scaled back their broadcasting plans to the World Cup now that it's, you know, the U.S. isn't in it. But oh. in any event, um, it's more notable for two things. One, that the Switch is getting this version, like this getting this update. So apparently the production costs of putting in, you know, the all the international teams that aren't that weren't in the game to begin with and the World Cup bunting and all that is apparently worth it based on the sales of FIFA and the fact that this isn't a standalone game. Traditionally, when FIFA when World Cup games have come out before, they've been standalone titles that have sold at full price. But <laughs> apparently the one for uh, the 2014 tournament in Brazil tanked. Mm. Because, okay. Because, I mean, the World, cause the World Cup qualification process is long, but they, re they tend to release it right before the final tournament when there's like a month of relevance. Oh, sure. So it's it seems like this thing, this series is probably going to get more support on Switch. At the very least, it'll probably get at least one more game. Yeah, um, 
I wouldn't be surprised if we get that announced on uh, about a month from now. At well, one EA. might say a Tuesday. Actually, no, it would probably be a little earlier than that. If it's, it, EA. it's probably the Saturday because that's when EA is doing their dog and pony show at E3 at, at not E3. <laughs> okay. Next door. Word. Although, to be fair, they are ending it. Theirs ends right before E3 officially opens. So. Okay. Uh, Grezzo is doing the new Luigi's Mansion. That came out via uh, Australian ratings board. Yeah. So every we all thought it was Next Level that was doing, you know, using their engine to do the port for uh, original Luigi's Mansion. And, you know, engines there. Maybe they're helping out, but. Gretzo was pointed out as the as the official developer by the Australian Classification Board. Uh, that kind of kills one theory as to what I thought would get announced during Treehouse Live. But Ev, did um, you expect Ever Oasis Switch? Um, not that so much as a new like a, a one last Zelda for 3DS or Four Swords oh. Adventures. For Oh. Does, would that have to be Grezzo? Couldn't that be whoever made the Link Between Worlds? Yeah, but I don't know how big Grezzo is, and because Link Between Worlds was mostly Nintendo internal, but Grezzo was involved with that. And okay. given that all of the Nintendo teams at this point are are known to be on Switch titles, they would probably be well into that, unless they're just helping out using like the next level engine. I'm just glad I'm just glad because it means that next level is probably working on uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force HD for the Switch this year. Hell yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd be but happy the, uh, hunters. The Grezzo thing is uh, interesting. It it makes me wonder if they are using Next Level's engine or is this are they making something completely different? And if if they are using like the Luigi's Mansion one engine, let's say does that mean we could have seen more GameCube ports on 3DS over the years? We still can. I mean, no, sure, we still can, can, but they're supporting it until the end of time. But uh, um, <laughs> I would have rather had GameCube games than N64 games. Uh, <clears throat> I I think there's a case for both. I think N64 has aged graphically the worst of any Nintendo system. Well, yeah. Mm. One so might say having, that generation has has uh, uh, yeah. aged the worst of any systems ever. Yeah, so I'm happy when <laughs> some of those N64 games that were decent get ported to 3DS with like some better graphics. Sure. So I'm, and the touchscreen saving the water temple. No oh, man. Well, wouldn't it be have been nice if we could have gotten like F Zero GX on there? Or? We still can. We still I mean, can. I, I'm not What's saying F-Zero? that to be dismissive. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah. I mean, what what was the quote from the uh, shareholders from the shareholder conference that last week that they want to keep supporting the 3ds until the switch is a one one right. per, is a one per person system instead of one per household? Yeah, that's not going to happen until it's much cheaper. Yeah, well, right. But I think what that means is that they're preparing to do like a three year Wild West style final stand on this thing which means that we could very easily get, I don't know if it would necessarily be uh, F zero GX, but it could be super Mario sunshine like that. That that'd be a game that that could realistically come to 3ds. That would piss some people off. That it's not coming to switch. <laughs> uh, I'd be okay with it coming to 3ds. I, I don't know if I need it on the switch. And then I, Yo-Kai watch three. <laughs> Yo-Kai, we still need Yo-Kai, Yo-Kai watch three. O- Odama. Oh, well, uh, hey, 3DS has a microphone. That's what Built I'm saying. Like, get some Chibi Robo, some of those late era GameCube games. Uh, we already Kaido have a Chibi origins. Robo game, Justin. <laughs> well, a, I mean, a, a Chibi real Robo Chibi. game that's better than the original Chibi Robo game. Do you not like Chibi Robo One? I've always wanted to play it. I think Chibi Robo One's the best Chibi Robo. Chibi Robo One and is let's do chores. Yeah, well, isn't I'm Zippo not going to do Ash? it when my mom tells me. <laughs> so, so I played two levels of my copy of Ziplash, maybe even just one. And my impression of it was, this is kind of like a stiff Yoshi's Island. It's exactly what it like is. A slow Kirby. Absolutely and, what it is. And Kirby's Kirby Kirby slow. A slow Kirby. <laughs> no, I I'm not a huge fan of Ziplash. It's not terrible. It's just like 
mediocre. I you like have to it. do a roulette to <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the worst part. Level you go to, but, but the developers know it's a shit mechanic, so that you can game the system with play coins. Okay, all right, Zach. <laughs> if you insist, I I don't I don't love the game. I just I think it's good, and and uh, I have not played uh, Yoshi's New Island, but from everything I've heard about it from you guys, actually, Ziplash might be the better game. It is. Yes. And I think the only person who might disagree with us is on the call. <laughs> Zach, did you are you, are you a Kirby head? Uh, I'm not going to get the Switch game, but I generally like Mio. Yeah. Okay, that was my question. It was if and did you like the Switch game and so forth. Uh, it's because it's multiplayer focused, and my wife won't play video games with me unless it's Jeopardy. Is it really multiplayer focused? I mean, it's there's a big multiplayer component, but I'm pretty sure they're just like an RPG party that f's up everyone around you. Yeah, that's yeah. true, and that would that would frustrate me. But also, like, you know, in the same way that Mario 3D World is built for multiplayer, but you can play it single player, you're clearly missing out on a lot. Yeah, right? it's. Playing 3D World is kind of a sad experience if you right. play it exclusively by yourself. Right. So, so some people disagree, but yeah. I mean, I like the game, but it's very clearly would be better with more people, and that's how I feel with with this new Kirby game. Very pretty, but you know, the 3DS Kirby games are single player experiences. I like those just fine. Well, Got it. I do want to say something about 3D World since you brought it up. I think some levels, most levels, are probably fine multiplayer, but there's some levels. That I think would probably be nearly impossible to do multiplayer. Yeah, those, same those, those same like flipping mechanics, where if every if you jump, oh yeah, I don't know how you do that with four people. There, you know, there, there was people. there was some of that shit in like the new Super Mario Brothers games. There, every game in that series has stuff like that. Where, yeah, I'm I've been playing platformers for thirty years, but my buddy who just is jumping on the you know, to play the first time, he's not going to play much of that. It's just going to be more frustrating for me. Exactly. Yeah. New Super Mario Brothers multiplayer feels like a game where you're not even necessarily supposed to win. Like I feel, <laughs> That's I, true. It, it feels like playing uh, an SNB multiplayer is <laughs> almost like pre-beating the game and then going around to various levels you like, and then losing sixty <laughs> percent of the way in is the ideal way to play the multiplayer in that game. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. All right. So we talked about our FIFA. We talked about our Grezzo. We talked about our Donkey Kong. Ikaruga is coming to Switch May 29th. Hey. Is that a? Do you guys like Ikaruga? It's a uh, game I've, I've never played, but always wanted to. I've played nice. a little bit of it, and a couple years ago, a friend of mine was just giving me his GameCube stuff, and I got a copy, but never really sat down with it for an extended period of time. Fourteen ninety nine on May 29th. That's a good price for that's that game. Good price that's, for that game. I, I want to say when they put it out on Xbox 360 like 10 years ago, it was 10 So, you know, that's probably about right, given, you know, increasing cost of porting stuff. And, well, Nicholas got to get their piece. But... Oh, yeah, it's, it's 10 bucks on Steam right now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let me see. Are there any updates? Did, but, but the most important part about the Switch version is that you will be able to play that game in Tate mode. Yeah. Based on like pin the pinball arcade and pinball FX three, that's a real good feature to have. That's almost required. Jose says Kirby is great one player as well. It is a fun game. Neil is very positive on the new Kirby game. Yeah, he liked it too. I have it, but I haven't played it yet, but uh, I should get around to it. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that if I saw it on sale somewhere, I might grab it. I, yeah. I, I want to find people to play it with, but nobody's going to want to do that. I've been I've been waiting to get Robobo for 20 bucks for a long time, but if they're keeping the 3DS around, I feel like that game is a wave or two away of going into the Selects library. I'm surprised it's not there already. Maybe January next year. Great they, game. They did just put triple deluxe in recently, so I think we're. I think, I think Robobo, etc., and Fire Emblem Awakening are the two games that seem like most destined to go into the selects line at some point. Yeah. There's one. There's one Mario. The Paper Mario Mario and Luigi game did not end up going to selects, right? Right, not yet. But that also came out what 
two years ago, two and a half years ago now. Yeah, so that might be that might actually, be one that ends up. Actually, Robobo's not there. Which Robobo's one? two years. I'm, oh, I'm surprised that Fire Emblem Awakening is not on sale yeah. already. It's yeah. a very good selling game. You you could sell the base game for twenty bucks and then make all the money on the DLC. Yeah, because there's a lot of DLC for that game. Right, hmm. right. Zach, what is this Korea business? Well, I don't really care about the Korea stuff, but um, no, we're talking we're talking about the uh, the Korea I, War ended. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mash ended. Um, so. You know, I've been saying for a while now that Switch is the new Vita because all those terrible waifu games that wound up breathing life into the Vita after Sony abandoned it have to go somewhere. And Galgun 2 just came to the Switch. So I thought, well, it's only a matter of time until Hyperdimension Neptunia, Donald's favorite series, comes to the Switch. And it is coming to the Switch in Korea and Japan. Uh, it's going to be like a turn-based RPG this time. It'll probably be terrible, but you can bet your bottom dollar that they will localize it and bring it here. And I will buy it. And Donald's gone. <laughs> <laughs> is it going to be one of those where... Uh... Is this Hyper Dimension Neptunia published by P-Cube or is it NIS? No, it's the, not. Neither of those. It's Idea Factory, right? They're they're the developers. I think <clears throat> Nisa published Nisa soil themselves with the first two games in the series, and then it's mostly been P Cube since. Okay, they're terrible. They're all terrible games. And the funny thing is, they try so many genres. You know, there's your turn based RPGs. There's one that's a Muso game. There's one that's like a. a dating sim kind of thing. There's, there's one where you're trying. An idle, idle game. game, yeah. Uh, and this, there's now there's an MMO parody game on the PS4, uh, but but they're all awful. They're all terrible games. Um, and but they keep making them. They they keep making them because people keep buying them. I don't know why anyone buys them. I only <laughs> buy them when they're on a flash sale for two dollars. <laughs> yeah, and. And the the part about it being a video like a parody of the video game industry, they lost that plot about six games ago. Oh yeah, they don't even try anymore. So you're saying this isn't like because I think a lot about Hatsune Miku, a game that when you look at it at the surface, you're like, oh, what's this waifu game? It's a it's a skinny, cute Japanese girl with blue hair. It's who? What 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 shitty game is this all about? <laughs> And then it comes to the state and Project Diva F, and then it builds a fan base, not because of its waifu tier purely, but more because those are just some really great rhythm games. Yeah, and, there's and, none of that here. Okay, so it's not like the it's not like Yakuza or Hatsune Miku where it, it had a niche audience, and then once more people played it, it was like, oh man, Hyper Dimension Neptunia is really good. This isn't like no. that one. No, people buy it because it's a waifu game. Uh, That's all, and it's not even it's not even a waif a creepy waifu game like the Galgun Two game is friggin' creepy because uh, you're ogling high school girls and you're poking them in places. Ah, but the Hyperdimension Neptunia games are just cute art of anime girls who transform into like cyborg anime girls. And they have special attacks. I mean, that's the whole thing. How many of these games have you played? Uh, how many have I played, or how many do I own? Because there's a different number. <laughs> I'm curious for Let's both, see. and I don't even know which one's more. Hold on now. Rebirth 1, <laughs> Rebirth 2, Rebirth 3, uh, Action Unleashed, the zombie game, uh, which, and then the, uh, mm, the, the idle game, and... Oh, no, no, no. I don't have the idle game yet. I have the... Uh, uh, Muso? I have the Muso. I named that one already. There's one with the black heart. I don't know what the hell it is. I just bought it because it was $2. Um, so I don't know what kind of game that is. But then I also have one on PS4. Um, that was 5 bucks. Have not touched that. So to answer your second question, 
I've played two of them. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and then you I have played one of the more. RPG ones, which is bad. Uh, and I've played the Musou game, which is a Musou game. And I can pretty easily get a platinum on it. Gotcha. <clears throat> gotcha. They're bad games. They're bad games. The, it, it was somewhere around, like, I, I tried the first one and just did not appeal to me. But it was somewhere, it was the combination of the fact that I think there's been Hyperdimension Neptunia related things going into my inbox for this <laughs> website since I started here three yeah. years ago. Yeah. And the fact that they put, they are not only doing, they not only did a zombie game, which burn it with fire, but they're also doing a VR game right now. Oh, that's right. It's like, I am done. Idea Factory, stick to the Otome. <laughs> it purge this from this industry, please. You know, the, the funniest thing is the, the first three Vita games, the Rebirth games, are remakes of the first three PS3 games that only came out in Japan. I don't know if they're actually any better. Uh, but uh, I think, I'm not positive about this, I think I heard that they're going to remake the Rebirth games in a new engine and put them on PS4. And maybe Switch. Switch now, sure, why not? But they, Donald's right. I mean, we get an email about this every few months. They're pumping a game out. All right, so then my last question for you, Zach. Yeah. And I, I say this, it's... If people don't know and, and they want to learn a little more about Zach, Zach is a man who <laughs> likes his Zach is a man who likes his waifus, and I don't say that in a patronizing way whatsoever. Right, because nope. I I've known you for years. You're yep. a good man. You love your wife. It's yep. you're you're a, you're a solid dude, and I'm pretty sure you just enjoy the aesthetics of cute anime girls. Correct. And it's sure in the way like a guy's attracted to a lady, but also in the in the in the way that like you just enjoy the artistic aesthetic of it. Yes, yes. It's kind of like how I like dinosaurs, but weirder. What, it's the exact same part of the brain. Uh, what is? How is the waifu game in the series? Are they is are they good waifus? Uh, they're. I mean, they're anime trope waifus. Um, there's only two waifus I really like a lot. Yeah, there's three. There's three. Um, but that's not a lot for you. Not a lot for me. They're they're much cooler in their cyborg forms than in their cutesy anime. Oh, you know I don't have the Sega Hard Girls meets Neptunia game either. That that's <laughs> Sega Hard Girls. Sega, Sega Hard Girls is the Sega version of Neptunia. Not published by happened. Sega. Not published not by published Sega. Published by Sega. Might not even be okay with Sega. <laughs> yeah. No, they had they had to license that. Oh so. God. Sega, Sega approved for some uh, stupid reason. Well, what a what a what a strange thing. Okay, yeah, Giovanni says that they're insufferable visual novels that tangentially have RPG mechanics attached. Oh, that's true. That's absolutely true. And the Muso game is is it's good because it's a Muso game and you can play it and mindlessly while you watch Bones or something. But uh, the stages go on so <laughs> effing long. It's like they missed the point of a Muso game. At a certain point, you stop and move on to the next level. They don't. They didn't get that memo. Zach's even, new podcast, Brennan Booth and Waifus. I can't even get wa Muso games right. Well, good to know that that's our top story for this week. <laughs> Zach's, so, Zach's uh, next so waifu. Now that, now that Galgun's on the Switch, you can look forward to Neptunia. You can look forward to uh, Sega Hard Girls. Um, what other horrible waifu games are there, Donald? I'm, I know Is I'm forgetting Senran at least one. Coming this year? Oh, Senran, baby! The yeah. Senran Switch. The Senran visual novel is coming to Switch. <laughs> oh, that's true. But we're also getting a pinball game, which makes no sense. <laughs> Telltale Senran Kagura. <laughs> <laughs> Senran Story Mode. <laughs> 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 you know, the funny thing is, the Senran games actually do have generally have very good stories and the writing is great uh but then they're just you know empty muso games after that well see it seemed like i i know this now because i have a i got a crunchy roll account in the fur in the last few months so i've sort of been diving into 
anime a little deeper. And what's good is that I can try stuff. And I'm realizing that like within the whole waifu culture, there's a lot of subversions of waifuism where it's like genuinely good artists. It's not like these people making schlock. Like you, you got things like pop team Epic, which are very like clear parody of that stuff. You have angel beats where it's very waifu kind of girls, but it's an extremely deep story about uh, like purgatory and teenagers dealing with their own death. And oh, then, God. and it's just, it's interesting to see the, there are a lot of very talented people making these things and sure. making things that appeal to this specific culture, which I mean, if it, if it has a high quality in anything, and if it's any kind of creative work that's published, you would assume that, but I don't know. I just, I'm, it doesn't surprise me that you say Senran has a good story. Yeah. Yeah. I got the Akiba, Akiba's beat game, assuming it was a waifu game, but it's really not at all. I heard it's crap. It's not great. It's, at least you, on Vita, at least on Vita, because the load times are abysmal. One game I've always wanted to play but never got to is the Akiba Strip, but not for the actual premise of the game, which I think oh, that's is what, like... That's what I meant to say. I got Akiba Strip. Yeah. That's the one where you have the small open world uh, yeah, it's like Akihabara. One in Tokyo, yeah. See, I always saw screenshots of it, and I was like, ooh, this is... A cool looking open world but then i watch right. video of it and it just it looks like a very shallow video game and it's not really an open world because every time you cross the street there's a load screen for like 30 seconds okay so it's not like the yakuza games where you're like exploring japan or even like the persona games no no okay how far did you end up getting into persona 4 me um, Yeah. god <sighs> Because you gave up and didn't like it, but I think I remember you trying again and liking it more. I don't know where I got in the story. I got back in the dungeon a couple times, um, but probably early though. Yeah, probably. I don't really. I don't even remember what the last you know story beat was. But I don't know, man. That game. That game is ninety percent visual novel. Yeah, I, I think it's worth knowing. I think once you get deeper into Persona games, there's the RPG especially starts to show itself. But it is it is in many ways a light Shin Megami Tensei with a with a very high, even if it's very high quality, sort of visually novelly part attached. Yeah. You have to know what you're getting into, and it has to be what you want. Right, and that's neither one of those things were true when I got it. Right, okay. but I did get it on a flash sale, so no no big loss. So we'll uh, let, let's let's close the show on this little question. I'm going to go around. Well, we'll do a Nintendo e question. We're probably going to know about the online service next week. If I was a betting man, I would probably say the earlier half of next week, and that's and I I, I say that actually because they say early May, and it's already May fourth, so it'll already be like May seventh by the time Monday rolls around. So probably before Thursday, we'll, we'll hear about it. Uh, Justin, what do you think we're going to hear and what do you, we think it's going to look like? Well, I do think they're going to keep the $20 price. Uh, God, I hope so. I don't think you can raise it from there. Or if no. they do, they le they do two tiers. Oh, yeah. there's if Right. They, I agree with that. There could be some sort of premium thing. Uh I'm not going to even speculate what the premium thing would be. Uh, this is really interesting, the whole Nintendo online subscription, because Nintendo's online has been so bad over the years <laughs> that now that you're going to be charging, I, I'm very excited to see what Nintendo does to actually step up their game. Uh, I do think they're going to continue with those uh, retro games, one a month. I think that's just going to be something that happens from this point forward. You think, it, you think it's, it's going to be, be like one arcade month? archives? Uh, no, uh, maybe a little. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be the retro games was maybe some sort of online component mixed in, but it wouldn't surprise me if at one point they just got too lazy with some of the games, and we're just like, no, here's just the retro games, and since there's no online, get two of them this month. Oh. <laughs> And then down the road, they could be like, well, look, we went back to one we already gave you and added online. Oh, I see. <laughs> Why not? Right. They were talking about a Netflix style thing. I don't think it's going to be like a Netflix style thing. I think it's going to be more like, hey, if you're a subscriber, you get it. And 
if you're not, you can buy it separately. But guess what? You probably should just subscribe. Right. Well, like, there's you, a can, you can get the eight gigabyte Wii U, or you can get the real Wii U. Uh, I think the interesting the thing that's really making me the most curious is what Nintendo is going to do about voice chat because their app is yeah. complete garbage. It's useless. It's a, annoying to use. You got to have like your switch hooked up. If you want to have a headset in your switch, you got to have a headset on your switch and then have earbuds coming through the headset and, or get one of those crazy Splatoon um, mixer splitter, whatever the, the heck they're calling it things. I don't know audio that well, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But and it's, it's just like, it's such a mess, such a mess of a situation when the, the solutions from competitors and even non-competitors with similar things is so it's such an elegant solution and i don't know why they're not doing it is the switch just not powerful enough to handle the games plus voice chat is that really what it comes down to no. the vita has <clears throat> the best party chat of any system i've ever experienced really where it's it's a separate app i i actually i was <clears throat> big into earth defense force 27 oh, right. so i was i was playing that with friends and um it's it's a separate app that you go into you invite friends or they invite you i think it can be like up to 50 people i don't know if it's actually up to 50 wow. people but it, it's a lot of people and then you're just talking to them independent of the games you're playing which yeah. i mean that that's how party chat works in some functionality on a lot of the systems i'm sure but I played it. I experienced that in Vita, and I think just having something like that, where you can just shoot the shit with friends while playing video games, that's all you need. Yeah. Un outside of like, um, I guess PUBG is one of those, or Fortnite is probably one of those games where you want to talk to your team if you're on a team. Oh but, sure. I just want to uh, talk to my friends if I'm playing with them. It's no, but I mean, I'm saying like I think a, a good party chat system like the Vita has would solve most of your problems. Possibly. Oh. I mean, go to any competitor of Nintendo's, and I'm sure that could solve the problem of the voice chat currently. Yeah, Donald, what are you? What are you sort of thinking? Um, I think it's going to. I don't. I still. I still believe at this point that they cannot get away with charging for online, given how far we are into this generation, with how many online games are already there. Oh, good point. And so I think we're looking. I think we're expecting PS Plus as it exists on the PS4. We're probably going to end up with PS Plus as it exists on the PS3. Oh, interesting. I can see that. You, They're going to charge for online. I think that's something they've said too many times to not do that. It would be a nice PR move, but I think they're still going to do it. And I think Smash is going to be the way they get people to pay for it. Agreed. Well, mm. I agree with that, too. Yeah, I just I can't like I can't see it, especially since there's a, a tw uh, there's a not one hundred percent chance, but still a decent chance that we're going to be getting some we're going to be getting Pokemon this year on the Switch. I, mm -hmm. I I agree with you as gamer. It's not like it would be violating a lot of things we know about Pokemon if they did that, but True. I don't know how willing Pokemon is to get online with that or to get in bed with an online system when the game itself is already going to be, you know, 50% more than they've ever charged for the game before. Right. 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 That's true. 33.33% of Pokemon thinks it's a great idea. <laughs> do you, do you think, do you agree with Justin for what the quote unquote free games are going to look like? Yeah. I, I'm hoping that the deals, like they've talked about doing discounted, or b deep, deeper discounts on games. I look forward to that because, Lord, those games are expensive. But yeah, probably a couple of couple of games a month. I don't think they're going to go full Netflix on this thing yet. Maybe next time around. Right. Right. Uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. As as for, <clears throat> I I think a lot about what EA is doing with their vault, and what Humble Monthly does with their treasure trove where it's not exactly a Netflix size subscription. Like I think on humble, they have like Alan wake American nightmare. They have the end is nigh. They have a bunch of their original games. They're, they're they giving have... away destiny Two 
next month. Oh yeah, that well that that's oh. that's the bundle itself. <clears throat> um, I did last month's bundle. I got Dead Rising Four, Ruiner, Kerbal Space Program, NBA Playgrounds, and I think three or four other games for twelve bucks. Damn. Um, good. Zach, do you know how Humble Monthly works? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm guessing you don't have a gaming PC. That, that's why like you're doing this from a Surface tablet most of the time. Oh no, I'm doing it from my PC now. We we okay. got a new PC that actually works. I just and I have Steam games that I play on it. I just don't play them often. Okay, so you might be interested in Humble. So you know how Humble Bundle does the thing where you can pay a dollar for yeah. these games, you can pay more or whatever. And then they have software, they have books. Now there's Humble Monthly, which you can get as a yearly subscription for like I think 120 bucks or you can get it month by month, which is 12 bucks a month. Okay. And what it is is at the start of the month, when you pay for it, you get whatever their upfront game is. In my case, it was Ruiner, Dead Rising 4, and um, and it was Kerbal Space Program. I paid 12 bucks. I got those games immediately. The month before, it was like Mankind Divided, God Eater 2 and 1, and then I think there was there was another game. There was Mafia 3. So some months and months it's really good. And this month it's it's Destiny 2. So if you pay them 12 bucks, they'll send you a bungee code or a blizzard code for oh, okay. Destiny 2 right now. After a month, when the next bundle's revealed, then the rest of the games are revealed in the lineup. So I didn't know NBA Playgrounds was going to be a game. I just got it as part of the bundle. So you're paying 12 bucks up front for one to three games that you know are going to be there. And yeah. then the rest of the games you're buying on blind faith. And it's kind of a fun thing because usually it's it's like 150 to 200 bucks in game deals. Wow. Um, but part of this, there, there's a couple of benefits to doing this. The first is that you get 10% off in the store. But the other is the Humble Trove, which is this collection of games that you can download DRM free. The end of is nigh is probably the coolest one. But they got Gone Home. They got... Um, they got the getting over it with with what's his face Bennett that, that Foddy. Game, Bennett Foddy. like that was that's on there too. You got Alan Wake's American Nightmare. You got some old Star Wars games that I think joined there today. And it's like maybe twenty to fifty games, but it's just a collection that you you have access to. And then EA is another sort of thing where you just have fifty games. And then I bet Nintendo's is going to be like that, but it's going to be a smaller number of games. Games are probably going to be going into that collection faster, and games are probably going to be leaving that collection faster. That's what I think it's going to be. Like, it'll be like 10 to 15 games, maybe, but it'll be maybe seven or eight of them will rotate, and then Super Mario Bros. might be like a constant on there. <laughs> that, that's that's what I'm guessing it's probably going to be, because because they were, they were talking about a, a <clears throat> platform-type deal for whatever they do that would replace Virtual Console. So. I think that, their platform is the classic things. Yeah, Zach, what are you what are you thinking for this? Uh, I I like the two tier idea. Um, I, I agree that, that so many games online are online now that don't require payment. They can't really say, well, now we're, you're going to have to start paying for Mario Kart. Um, so that probably a. a, a Two tier system is a good idea, uh, but they have to. It, if they're charging twenty bucks a month for anything, uh, like a free game's not going to cut it. I, I have Super Mario Brothers a hundred ways. Um, I, I I don't know what they can do to pull me in. Besides, <clears throat> I guess like what you guys are saying, give me good, good rebates not rebates, sales on games I don't have. Don't give me, you know, 30% off this $60 game from, you know, Club Nintendo or whatever it's called now. Um, give me, you know, half off. Have a flash sale, for God's sake. Yeah. Sales on indie games are way better on Switch than Nintendo's oh, yeah. in the past. Mm. There, I don't know. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. I do this when I keep track of the sales. There's a lot of stuff that's just 10% off just to get exposure. That's true. Because the eShop, the Switch eShop is such a nightmare for discovery. Yeah, it is. Sometimes you'll see games just like randomly drop 10% just so they can get in a smaller pool. Yeah. yeah. Get on the sale page. 
Right. Yeah, the other it's I guess that's gonna be Switch's problem going forward is it, discovery. It would be nice. It would be nice if they like reformatted that shop because it was nice at the beginning, but now I mean, good lord, you have to search for anything you want. Wasn't the Wii U eShop much better? So Yeah. They had categories. Yes, yeah. So why how is this like the one thing they've done worse than Gotten Wii wrong. U? Well I, the I other thing know. they've done worse is their Club Nintendo solution. Yeah, that and was they terrible to begin with. So, and we, you know, we need some themes and pretty up the OS. Yeah, way to back up our saves. Will that be part of the online? No, it will not. I guarantee it. Because I would pay a lot of money to be able to back up my. I save. would too. I I'm I could... afraid to bring it. I'm like, I need to treat this thing. I like a I could... baby in a diaper. Because if I drop this, I lose like thousands Everything. of hours of gameplay. <laughs> yeah. I could see a, a situation where they just add a small amount of cloud storage free for everybody in an update, and then maybe part of the fee is you get more. Like you it can store be. you know, 50, 100 save files up there if you've got the online and maybe 25 without. I just feel like if they were going to do online cloud saving, they would have done it by now. There's got to be a reason they're not. And, you know, NOA is probably like, guys, just do it with the cloud saves. That's what people want. NCL has got to have a reason that they're not allowing it. It must have to do with piracy because they're terrified of piracy. But it would have happened by now. I don't think it is. Well, Nintendo has always been afraid to let you back up any online game saves. That's true, too. Until, and, until the Wii U where they couldn't and, really avoid it with the hard drive. And, like, here's the thing. Just... I don't have to like the answer you give me, Nintendo. Just tell me why you're not doing it. Just don't stay silent on it. And everyone's asking you, cloud saves, come on. And they're not saying anything. Tell me why you're not. I, it's not going to affect whether I buy your next system, clearly. I mean, folders took a while, too. This is one of those things that they could add over time. I think PS3 <laughs> added the cloud saving, what, like half of the time into the a long time yeah. is, it, it there there's a world where this can happen then again ps4 still doesn't have name changes so we'll see ps but ps3's os was like garbage out of the gate and they they it took them like two or three years to really get it right mm -hmm. and the slim yeah the slim yeah, yeah. well I, I think I think that gives that gives us all enough to think about for the next three four days until this thing happens. <laughs> I say it's time to call it a show. All right. Uh, just one oh. one thing I need I, I should probably do here before we go. Um, I think we might have I might have spoken a bit at a turn or gotten some of the details wrong last week uh, in regards to the structure of the board at, at Nintendo. Uh, this is from the comments on the article at Nintendo World Report for this video or for there the show is last no week. board. Uh, Bill Trinan owns all of it, a hundred percent. No, ba basically, uh, this is from Hacker Alias MASB. Uh, Reggie wasn't promoted to CEO of NOA. They, it sounds like they scrapped the position after <laughs> Iwata died. And Poor so, Reggie. God. So Reggie is still the top person in NOA, in, but instead of reporting to a CEO of Nintendo of America, he just reports directly to the president of Nintendo itself. Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, that's and, basically what it was before, let's be honest. Yeah. Yes, the uh, title doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Re Reggie was promoted to executive officer, which was the same in 2016, the same title that Shibata had. And basically, they, they've they been, the Reggie is a part of the board, but not as in a higher position. And Shibata was promoted to a senior executive officer position, and now he's basically taking Furukawa's job as head of global marketing. Mm. Donald, okay. if you could choose one title, if you were Reggie fils and you could choose one job title for yourself, what would it be if you were in his position? President. It sounds better. Okay, I would yeah. choose Big Boy. I would choose Nintendo of America <laughs> Big Boy, Alex oh, Kalafi. <laughs> Oh, you know, our, what? Yeah. you know, hold on, hold on. There's one more thing I want to say. Charles Martinet will be playable in Runner 3. That's the that's, biggest news of the week. That's pretty awesome, right? Yeah, and it's not not just, and it's literally Charles Martinet. It's not, he's not playing a role. Right. It's literally Charles as himself. 
Yeah. He's got this. He's got this cute little red Santa nose, and he's like, and he looks like white hair. He's wearing like an old grandpa sweater vest. It's it's a it's a real it's a real nice thing, and I, I yeah. hope you get that. Like I hope that's the final unlockable because I want to put some work in to get that thing. <laughs> now Charles is a great guy, and it does fit him. Every time I've run into him at many many E threes and at other Nintendo events outside of E three, he's always been really kind and really friendly with the fans. He just he's just happy to be there, happy to interact with everybody, and will help you cut promos doing the Mario voice. He, he, oh wow. He just comes off as this guy who like really loves doing it. And like I see him, like I follow him on Instagram, and every once in a while he just shows up at like comic conventions and stuff like that. Huh. So that's cool. Good for Charles. And yeah, man, he's yeah. only sixty-two. He's got he's got some years left, hopefully. Hey, yeah, man. I'm, he could have a big paycheck coming at him in this Mario movie. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he better voice Mario. Oh my god, it's going to be Danny DeVito. <laughs> It's gonna be Ryan Reynolds again, <laughs> and no, he'll be and, Luigi. <clears throat> and um, I mean, Alan, like the voice of Scrooge McDuck that passed away passed away a couple years ago. He was doing the voice up until he was ninety four. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because he he was in the way forward. He was yeah. in the Kills yeah. Remastered. Yeah, and boy, did he sound his age in that game. <laughs> yeah, but I'm so happy they got him. I, it's it's there's nothing you could do about it. It's just interesting where you're like, oh man. You can tell that's a 90-year-old man. It's cool that they're doing it, but oh boy. Yeah. All, All right. right. So that'll do it. It's uh, I'm your big boy, and thank you for listening. Nintendo News Report, NintendoWorldReport.com, Patreon.com, slash NWR, Nintendo News Report on iTunes and Google Play, and Nintendo World Report TV on YouTube, at ZMiller1902, at Donald hey. Mick. At, <laughs> I, I guess we're just gonna be player one podcast now. At King, at King Nintendo fan, cheap and <laughs> at Kulafia. There you go. That's I guess we show. can say something a little different, maybe reasonably priced. Reasonably priced. <laughs> <laughs> Cost within reason. <laughs> 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 economically advisable <laughs> inexpensive a bargain yeah. at twice the price there you go <laughs> all right bye 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 Good night.